It seems like everybody now wants to have their own coffee bar at home. The world is tired of spending $18 on a pumpkin spice latte. So you go shopping to build your brand new coffee bar and you get overwhelmed and annoyed. Why is there 18 different drippers to choose from? And why is there 50,000 different WDT tools and like 30,000 different tampers? I know, it's overwhelming. And that's why I'm gonna guide you through building your own coffee bar. The first thing we need to figure out is how you like drinking your coffee. Do you normally drink lattes with milk and syrup or do you like drinking your coffee black? I'll cover both of these, but let's start with lattes lattes and espresso based drinks first. I'm gonna cover three different categories of machines that you can start looking at. The first category of machines are called capsule machines, think Nespresso. These are generally the most convenient with the lowest barrier to entry. If you're one that's always rushing around in the morning, you don't have to wait for them to heat up and they rarely cause any mess. Some of the higher end ones have steam ones so you can make hot lattes like this, but there's creative ways to get around that with French presses or you could even buy your own separate milk frother like this. From turning on the machine to getting a shot of espresso in total takes about 30 seconds. In my opinion, this is where capsule machines shine. They're convenient, fast, easy to use, and they're cheaper than your local Starbucks fix. And if you're somebody who only drinks iced lattes and iced coffees anyways, not having a steam wand isn't really gonna matter because you're never gonna use it. Obviously, they're not perfect and they do have downsides, but they are great for some people. The second category of machines are my favorite and the widest category of machines, semi-automatic. These are great espresso machines for people that like being involved in the process. For some people, that might be a huge positive and sound super fun, but other people, it might sound really terrible. Honestly, though, this is where espresso can get a little expensive. With a semi-automatic machine, there's a lot more tools and a lot more gear that you're gonna have to get along with it. Like a nice high quality burr grinder, some puck prep tools, a scale. Honestly, the list can go on and on and there's tons of stuff that isn't essential, but when you fall down the rabbit hole, you're probably gonna think that it is. But don't let this fool you. As soon as you get a nice high quality espresso machine, a nice quality burr grinder and start using high quality coffee, instead of making coffee that tastes just as good as your local Starbucks, it's going to taste 10 times better. Another huge positive with semi my automatic machines is that they almost always have a steam wand. This completely opens up the possibilities for drinks beyond iced lattes. Think hot lattes like this, matcha lattes, chai tea lattes, and even hot chocolate. My go-to recommendation for a beginner-friendly semi-automatic espresso machine is the Breville Barista Express because it has a built-in grinder. Now the third category is called manual espresso machines, and in my opinion, these are the most complicated for beginners. Manual espresso machines require you to do everything yourself. You still need all of the same equipment that you need for the semi-automatic machines, like a high-quality burr grinder a scale, and in this case, you actually need a water kettle because they don't have boilers. Manual espresso machines do have some positives though. For people that like to geek out over coffee and numbers, this is a dream come true because you can control every single variable like water temperature and you can even pressure profile. Manual espresso machines for the most part are less expensive than semi-automatic machines, making the barrier to entry a little bit better on the cost side of things, but there is a bigger barrier to entry for the educational side of things. Since there's more variables to play around with, there's more variables to learn. Like I said before, some people would really love this and some people would really hate this. Most manual espresso machines also don't come with a steam one, so you'd have to get creative with a French press or buy a frother separately. But like the capsule machine, if you like iced lattes and iced coffees, you're not gonna have any issues. There are tons of different options in each one of those categories, but I recommend figuring out which category you're in and then going from there. Now let's say you could care less about lattes, cappuccinos, flat whites, and you just care about black coffee. I think this could fall into two different categories and maybe a third. The first category is relatively new and unfortunately is kind of expensive. This is a whole bean coffee capsule machine that's designed to make high quality pour overs at home. They use specialty coffee beans, pour over patterns, agitation to give you a perfect pour over just like how a barista would at a cafe. In my opinion, this machine falls in the box of like, hey, I got the cheddar, I want really nice coffee, but I don't wanna learn how to make it and I don't really have the time. Because while this machine does everything for you, it grinds the coffee beans for you, it pours the water for you, and it even weighs it for you. It also kind of just looks cool. It's interesting to watch it do its thing. Like I said, it's expensive coming in at $800, but there is no educational barrier because you don't need to know anything. The second category is for people that don't want the financial barrier to entry to be so high and would rather learn stuff. This is where you start getting into the world of pour overs and drippers. This is one of my favorite drippers to get. It's called the Origami. And the reason why I like it so much is because you can use conical filters or flat bottom filters. This route is definitely more involved. There's more to learn and there's more variables that you can play with and adjust. There's some other types of equipment that you'd want to have along with the pour over kit, like a scale, a water kettle, and still a high quality burr grinder. The world of drippers is so vast and honestly so much fun because there's so many different ones out there and they're all not too expensive. They're all like 40 or 50 bucks. So you can like keep trying different ones. When you go down this route, the most important piece of equipment to get is your grinder. I would say spend the most money on this. And up to this point with all the information that I gave you, if you don't use high quality coffee beans, none of it's gonna matter. You can spend thousands of dollars on a grinder and an espresso machine and it won't matter. It still won't taste good. So like I said, figure out what category that 
you're in and then go from there. And let me know in the comments which category you guys are in, or if you wanted me to do a more in-depth video on any one of the categories with specific product recommendations.